We're joined now on Mass and All Access by Catherine Rowe, the Baltimore Orioles Minor League's Mental Skills Coordinator. Catherine, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. So first off, let's start with the title, Mental Skills Coordinator. It's a little more abstract than, say, a pitching coach. Can you just explain in general like what your role is? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I think a lot of people don't really understand what mental skills is. Um, a lot of people think that I'm a therapist or a psychologist, and um, I'm, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I am a licensed mental health provider, but my role in the minor leagues, mental skills coordinator, um, I'm sure all of you know baseball is a game of failure. And there are a lot of times where players need to keep performing, right? They have the physical aspect of pitching or their hitting coaches, and then they have strength and conditioning. They have our nutrition, but I'm here to help on the mental side of the game. So everything else in between that can be impacting their performance. So I like to say that um, I'm a legal performance enhancer and that I try to help players figure out what their ideal performance mindset is so that we can help them consistently perform at their best, despite all the failure that's going to be happening. Yeah, and you mentioned their performance on the field. For somebody who might not know a, a lot about what you're doing specifically, can you tell us a little bit about how what you're teaching and talking about translates to the performance that we're seeing on the field? Absolutely. So I think a lot of times um, I... I'm a big proponent to talk about like mindfulness um, and self-talk, especially with baseball players. Um, I think about when they're going up to hit in the box, right? What's going through their head at that moment? If they're telling themselves, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't strike out. Typically, that's what's going to happen. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I'm going to help them figure out instead, like, okay, in those moments, what can your body be like? What can your thoughts be? What can your mood be? What are these things that are going to help you perform instead of hinder you? So that's just an example. And the same could be for a pitcher who's up on the mound. And let's say they, someone just hits a bomb off them. Okay, so you still have to perform. So how are we going to move forward? So that's, again, where routines are big in baseball that I help them with. Um, but examples of like self-talk, imagery, and even, like I said, mindfulness and breathing is a big one for them as well. Yeah, and you mentioned, you know, obviously without getting into specifics about what you're talking about with certain players, do you have any overarching goals, say, for an entire season when you're talking to guys where, you know, you want to get from point A to point B in terms of their mindset throughout the year? Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because what is so cool like hitting and pitching, like every player is unique and they have a different approach and the same goes for mental skills. So I can't say that I have a specific goal overarching for everyone. Um, that's the same, but for each player, I would say, especially after my first full season um, with the minor leagues, you know, I really want players to work on having a routine in place so they can have that consistency each game because we play so many games. Um, so if they have this routine in place, it's going to help them, a mental routine that is, I apologize, a mental routine in place to help them when they start from the complex league all the way up to the show. So if we start at the, the, low, the lower level, it's going to easily help them to move up each different level. And you mentioned the Florida Complex League. The Orioles had a huge draft class this year. Just go to the Complex League. What's it like working with some of these, these athletes that are just getting into professional sports that might not have had this exposure when they were playing in college or even some of them were high school draftees? Yeah, it's exciting, I have to say. Um, I... There, I have to say, our organization has amazing players from the complex league all the way up. I didn't do work with AAA this year, but um, with AA, and I can say that we have phenomenal players. And to work with these new draftees, too, they're excited to learn about this, especially the really young guys and the Latin players as well, something that they have never been introduced to. I think the biggest challenge, though, can be breaking the stigma that doing mental skills work is considered a weakness. If I'm not performing well, that's when I go and meet with Catherine. But it's actually the opposite. I'm trying to promote and the managers and coaches are doing this as well that meet with her now 
no matter what's going on, because you can always get better at this. And it's going to help you in the long run. So these guys are all energetic and they are very responsive um, with what I'm talking about. So I have been thrilled. It has been so much fun working with that. everyone. Every, every level has been great. And you mentioned working with Double A. We actually talked with Gunnar Henderson ahead of the Bowie playoffs, and he mentioned that when he first got there, he was in a slump. He really wasn't hitting well. And then he talked to you, and things seemed to turn around. What does it mean to you to hear that from a young player who's one of the top prospects in the Orioles organization, that it wasn't a mechanical change that got him back to where he wanted to be. It was just a change in his mentality. Gunner is a phenomenal player and human and uh, reading that article was very uh, humbling and very, like, I, I was speechless. Um, Sig actually had sent it to me and um, it was really awesome to, to, to read. I have no other words than that. It was a highlight, I would say, of my career. And with those younger players, like you mentioned, how important is it to start those conversations at a younger age before they get to the major leagues to develop those habits and hopefully carry things throughout their career? Yeah, I, I wish we could be teaching this in Little League, um, all these skills, because the younger and earlier that they start to learn it, the, only, the better it's going to be for them. Because once they're in the big leagues, they'll have it in place already. And it's going to be second nature to them, just like anything else that they're learning on the field. So I think the earlier, the better. And I, you know, if we could get doing some work in the, even in the Dominican and the DR with our players, it, it's even better. Um, so earlier, the better. And finally, you mentioned a little bit of the, the stigma around mental health conversations, especially in professional sports, where a lot of these athletes are just expected to perform under whatever circumstances. How important is it to continue to have those conversations? And where are you hoping to see those conversations grow in the future? Yeah, I, you know, I've already been really impressed with how like I said, our player development and front office and our coaches and managers have already broken, trying to break that stigma down. I think by them supporting what I do and what mental skills is, is already starting to help that. And then also to hear, we have managers that have big league experience that will say, I wish I had this during my time playing. There's nothing wrong that you should be going to her. So I think by having the coaches speak up about that um, is only going to help, especially with the younger players. And like I said, the Latin players as well, where they have, have never had this experience before. Um, and then also I, I feel very lucky that I've had some big league players speak up to the younger players in Florida about ment the, the mental side of the game and how important it is. So it's a, a conversation we have to keep having, but it also has to be genuine and authentic, not just like shove down their throat all the time where they're just going to like roll their eyes like, yeah, we get it. Um, so I think when it comes up, how it's been done has been amazing. And I think for me personally, I try to break that stigma by with the players. Sorry, like just to build their trust with them first. I don't just again, like throw things at them, like you need to do this, you need to do this. I really try to build their trust and then have them see that I'm, I'm a human. I, you know, I'm not this like crazy weird person. Like I, I am a human. Um, I'm an athlete myself. Like I know the, how this impacts you. So I think once I build that trust with them and relatability factor, um, that also helps them to see like, oh, okay, like this isn't a foreign thing that's really weird. It's really helpful. Um, so the earlier, the better we start this and like making it normalized that like, Hey, go meet with Catherine, the better. And again, like the coaches and managers in front office, what they're doing is incredible as well. Catherine Rowe, the minor league mental skills coordinator. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me again.